Need link building or content? Go to fatjoe.com. On demand marketing services for agencies and teams. Fat Joe. Uh, welcome to the auditing portion of Brighton SEO. I am absolutely thrilled to be here and I hope you've all had a wonderful morning so far. My name is Lucy Dodds and today I'm going to be talking to you about how we do large scale content auditing when you are just one person. So a little bit about me, I'm coming up to my sixth or seventh year in search. Um, I've been agency side, I've been in-house, I work in e-commerce sites, I've done lead gen sites, I've done a lot of content work so far. Um, and all of this has mostly been at Evolved Search, the current agency that I work at now. We are a wonderful bunch in Newcastle upon Tyne at the moment, and we've got about 60 lovely marketers who I've been working with to achieve the goals that I want to talk about today. Now, first I want to do a little bit of story time. I'm really sorry it's not going to be long and boring, but I did want to give a bit of context about the talk that um, I've brought to you today. And we need to go back in time to this time last year, at last year's Brighton SEO. Um, at that time, we were hiring for a new head of SEO, and we'd been looking for someone for months and months and months, and the search had been going on some time, um, but then we found someone, and they said they would meet me here at Brighton SEO, but I was kind of worried it was going to be someone like this. I was like, oh, okay, great. So they came to meet me, we had some drinks, and I was like, oh, yeah, ha, oh, great to meet you, please don't understand what I am really like, please be my friend. But actually, we had matching Pikachu t-shirts on, so I knew everything was going to be OK. Regardless of Pikachus, though, uh, this was my new boss. And this was our head of SEO and someone that I really wanted to impress and like, actually do some good work for them. So a few months later, when they come to me and say, Lucy, we're going to do a content audit for this client. It's going to be the best audit we've ever done. You're going to have as much time as you want to do that. And I'm like, yeah, sounds good to me, because I've done auditing before, I think. I've done auditing for products. I've done content audits for services. I've done auditing for EAT concepts. I have done auditing for small portions of a website. But my head of SEO says, no, we are doing a full content audit. It's 8,000 URLs. And because of the way I am, I just go, yeah, sounds good. But inside, I feel like this. Because that sounds like a lot of work that, to be honest, I don't know how to do. But I was going to take the challenge. And I should probably caveat now and say that Evolved is a really supportive team. Head of SEO is great. But we're all SEOs. We're curious. We want to learn. We want to challenge ourselves. We want to be the best like no one ever was. So of course, I want to take this audit and do something that I was really proud of. Didn't want to bother anyone, but yes, I did ask a lot of questions. And it made all of the learnings that I've brought to you today. And eventually, I had a process that is 10 steps long. And what I've been able to do is make a big impact on these larger websites which are underperforming, low conversions, whatever reason we want to do a content audit for. So the painful story is over. And we are going to get to the 10 steps to your content audit for thousands of URLs. Number one, we're not actually doing any auditing yet. Probably is not going to do any for a long time. Because the first step is we're going to do some brand research. We are going to host a session with lots of other people in the business that we're working on. CEOs, we're going to be talking to sales teams, customer service teams, all these teams that as marketers we actually don't really get involved with, particularly if you're, particularly if you're agency side. And what we do in these sessions was we ask what kind of content we want to create, what is the purpose of our audit, what message do we want to actually portray as our brand, what kind of customers do we want to attract, what do they want to know, what do they not want to know. We put everything on post-it notes and we end up with a nice thing like this, where this message shows um, for my example, is if I had a gardening website and my head of sales comes to me and says, uh, we know that Gen Z customers love gardening, but they don't know how to do it. Then customer service comes and says, uh, they don't like to speak to us on the phone, they just want bite-sized pieces of information. I'm like, okay, all sounds good so far. But then I want to verify that with some audience research because it's no good everyone just sitting in a room and hopefully getting it right. So we actually need to speak to some customers now and make sure the content we want to achieve out of our audit is actually good. And you'd actually be really surprised about how many customers you can actually speak to. It's not hard to do real verification with audiences by just giving someone an Amazon gift card. Send out an email and you'd be so surprised about how many people you can actually get on the phone and make sure the research that you've done is actually you know, worth it. 
So then we use these find it, uh, findings and we make a content audit statement. And in this statement, the reason that we have this is because we need something unique that we're going to remember about why we're doing this audit in the first place. So my example for the Gen Z gardening website, I'm going to say, right, I need content to be informative, accessible, digestible. It's pretty vague, I get that, but it's something unique to you that your audience research has already shown and why you need to do the audit in the first place. Then we're going to put it on a post-it note in a place that you will remember because you need it later. You need it throughout the whole process. So please, like, here, computer, wherever you want. And the reason that we need this is because there are many reasons to do a content audit. You could be a site underperforming, or behind competitors, poor conversion rate, but they're not unique. Like, they happen to every site that I've ever worked on. So what I was thinking about this talk is I didn't want to go too much into why you want to do an audit. I assume if you're here, then we already know the reasons of why we want to do that. Or maybe you just came here to see Grace and Sophie. I don't really know. Please don't tell me if you are. And then we're going to look at that post-it for a final time and just make sure that we know the unique reason of why we want to do this audit in the first place, not just because the site's underperforming, because any site could have that problem. OK, we're going to touch a little bit into actual work now. We're going to categorize our auditing. So what I mean by this is there are several ways that you need to start categorizing URLs and making notes before you've actually done any of the like work. Different ways to categorize things is you might start out with your business itself. For example, if I have an automotive business, I want to think about what kind of areas perform really well for that business. So, OK, Audi, Mercedes, might think some models of Golf and A1. I'm going to write them down as notes. If I had a garden and e-commerce business that sells brakes, the lawnmowers are great success, I'm going to write them down as well. I have lots of notes on a nice spreadsheet or on paper about what areas of the business do really well. Another way you might want to categorize things is through a marketing funnel. This is one that we use at Evolved. Um, and the reason I do this in this way is because when I've done audits so many times, you will know that um, you will see there are many words that all websites use. So awareness level content, guide, advice, how to, we all say that. Consideration level content, uh, FAQs, consideration, uh, comparison, reviews, versus, or. There's a lot of words that like that that come up all the time. So when I want these areas of content to be done really well in my audit, I'm going to look at these filter options that I've created, be like, all right, OK, yeah, I'll just concentrate on this one area. And then we have to make a note of everything else. So we've got things like homepage, about contact, all those pages that you need to keep regardless of performance. Uh, your audit can kind of give you some insights on how they're doing, but they're going to be kept OK. And luckily, I've put this all together in a free template that you can find at the end of the talk. All these words and filtering options that you might find useful, um, I will share on Twitter at the end. Um, if my automatic tweet works, I don't know. Number five, we're actually going to get into some, some work now. We're going to pull some data. Now, I need to pull data from several sources. You're going to need a crawling tool. And I did kind of think of how I could do this as a low budget um, way of doing a content audit. But if you have thousands of URLs, I'm going to assume that you have access to something like Screaming Frog. You need it regardless. Uh, you also need access to a keyword tool. Um, I have examples here, but God help me say them wrong on stage. Uh, it's SEMrush, not SEMrush. Uh, but please don't anyone correct me on that. So yeah, you're going to need access to something like this. You're going to need data from analytics, probably from the past two years, depending on how your business was affected by the pandemic. But we're going to need things like sessions, um, revenue leads, things like that. Same from Search Console, clicks, impressions, yada, yada, yada. We put this all into an Excel document. We do not put it into sheets because sheets will crash and die because the processing power is not good enough for you to do thousands of URLs at once. So you pop it all into your Excel spreadsheet. We're going to make one master tab using a VLOOKUP formula that will put everything into one place. Now, there are a lot of metrics that I would be using to order content. Again, they're on my template that I included at the end of this talk. I couldn't put them all in one slide because I'd get wrong because you can't read it. But there is a lot more to a content order than just on here. One metric that you might consider putting on your content order or a measurement of content is word count. I don't know how many people might have seen the, this tweet that came from the back of an SEO whose client deleted all pages that were uh, a thousand words or less. Um, please don't do this. Please don't even put word count in your content order. It is not an indicator of user interest or engagement. Just don't bother because it can really throw you if you see something that's underperforming, that's low word count. Well, maybe there's a different reason. It means nothing. 
Okay, and then finally, when we have our master tab with all of the information on, we're gonna add one more column. And this describes the action that we take for our content audit. Are we gonna keep, improve, remove, or merge? Next, still not quite auditing, but we're gonna go beyond search. And the reason that I say this is because we need to ask other stakeholders for their opinion on what we're gonna remove in this audit. There are lots of other teams who will be clamoring to keep their content. Customer service, sales teams who use things internally to pass to customers. And to be honest, I don't fight people when they wanna keep things like this because it ends up being like 20 pages out of 10,000. So regardless of performance, we're gonna keep those. You need to respect other people's opinions because and not all traffic comes from search. Next, we are gonna highlight some trends. I'm gonna make our lives easy because we're faced with thousands of URLs in this Excel document, not sheets. And it looks like a lot. So we apply conditional formatting. And this was a really, really handy feature that I don't know why I've ignored it for so long, but it's literally conditional formatting and color scales. And it gives you a lovely visual of what's good, red. No, what's good is green, what's bad is red. Um, for reference, these numbers are all made up. Please don't quote me on any of these things. You'll also find a lot of content that is very red. And if we're looking at things for the past two years and we see content that has done nothing. Um, and don't be too disheartened if you see things like this because I kind of want to show some examples of things that I've seen in the past. Um, 10 haircuts from the past 10 years for a site's 10th anniversary. It was a solicitor's site. Um, we had a garden norms. Gardening site made sense, but when we're thinking about those Gen Z customers, do, do they want to read about this? Does a journalist care about this for a link building purpose? Uh, I don't think so. And then finally, we have the best cars to give for a birthday. Now, it was a car finance website. Cars, birthday cars, okay, I get it. But it kind of made me laugh because this one reminded me of a program from a long time ago. I don't know if I've shown my age or the graininess of the picture uh, shows about how old this program was. Um, but a highlight of my late noughties was my super sweet, sweet 16. The premise of this show where we had some really rich teenagers who had an extravagant birthday party, usually a celebrity involved, and we got a car at the end. However, unlike this lovely lady, Real people don't get cars for their birthday. And this car finance blog was full of high-end suggestions. So it was things like a Tesla, a brand new Mercedes, like, oh yeah, I'm not gonna get any of them for my birthday, okay? So it felt like a bit of a vain attempt at sales and the metrics spoke for themselves. No clicks, no impressions, no backlinks, no one cares. Um, so don't worry about when you see things like this and this is a good reason to do an audit because you'll see a lot of these numbers and you can present them to other people in the business and be like, this is why we need to get rid of this content because no one cares. And need I remind you of the helpful content update? I've already heard it mentioned once this morning. I'm sure it, I'll hear it again. If it says to focus on people first content, people looking for car finance, okay? So they're not buying anything outright. They need monthly payments. Not gonna be buying people Teslas for their birthday. Okay, next, we're gonna start with eight that start cutting. And we're probably gonna cut loads out. I have to say probably, because I'm not allowed to just tell you what to do, but in my opinion, when we see things like this, I wanna make a really big impact on this large site. So when I see a bunch of URLs that have done nothing for two years, I think to myself, am I gonna do anything about this? When am I gonna do anything about it? Because if it's in 12 months time, I don't care because why should I work on something that's so bad now when I have so much other content to work on instead? And if you are worried about taking out the trash of this content, remember we're here to make a big impact on a large site. So if you feel like you have a significant portion to remove, yes, you can test the removal if you really wanted to, but remember it might be a drop in the ocean compared to the uh, overall picture. Number nine, actually gonna do some work now. Gonna get to the content order and, and it's really, really boring. So we work in batches. All that filtering that we did earlier on, um, everything we wrote down about a marketing funnel or our business, we're gonna use those because we need to work in small sections. Um, content auditing, when you're actually looking through all of these URLs, it just gets really tiring, to be honest. Um, so when I'm working on an area of a business that I need to take maximum care with because it performs so well, like I can't do that wrong. So I choose those small batches because it means I won't get fatigued. You'll see a lot of content that looks like this, nice green. And if I see things like this, and I've got thousands of other URLs to look at, I'm just gonna mark this to keep. 
because don't break it, don't fix what's not broken. There's no reason that you need to go through this because yes, you could if you really wanted to, but you probably just don't have time. This, personally for me, is the sweet spot of content when I'm seeing a lot of red and a lot of green. When I'm seeing URLs that are underperforming in some ways, but performing a lot in other ways, I'm gonna mark these ones to remove because this is the way that I can actually make a difference to the site because I don't need to do a lot of work. There's just a couple of tweaks that I need to, to make. But when you are doing things to remove, please, please bear in mind like, your actual workload. I made this mistake um, in one of the first audits that I did that I just marked loads to remove, passed it over to a client and was like, bye, go and do that. And then nothing got done. So that was a real shame and that was completely on me. So you have to remember that if you only say have resource to do 20 pages of content in a month, you can only mark 20 to remove. So you always have to be reminding yourself of that content audit statement you made earlier. Be like, okay, does this actually make sense for me to do? Am I able to do it? Will I actually be able to make a difference in the short time that I have? Finally, we're gonna have a content to merge and this is why we need batches. When you're working in batches, it's much easier to see two URLs together that you think, oh, that's kind of the same thing. So I might say a URL that's like, how do you review one, how do you review two? And I'm gonna look at those and be like, oh, they can probably be one really strong piece of content. It's likely I can merge those together. And the last thing I want to say about working in batches is that you probably can do a few hundred URLs in a day um, before you turn into this. But yeah, just keep working in those batches to make sure you don't end up like Post Snorlax. Finally, last point, number 10, check internal links, please. It's in capital letters because I please, please, I'm begging you to listen to this one. Um, we see content a lot like this, which we are going to remove, okay? And maybe internal links pointing to those pages, um, we have to think about how people are actually finding them. Internal links pointing out from these pages probably don't matter because there's no value being passed over anyway. But what about someone who is gonna be clicking into a page uh, through an internal link and you've took it away? This is where we get to remove versus redirect. Um, a 301 permanent redirect makes total sense if the piece of content that you are um, updating is being pointed to something else that makes sense. So we have an old guide that we've got a new version of redirecting the new one. That makes sense. But I have seen countless times people do a 301, 301 redirect to the homepage, just blindly redirect everything. And I'm like, mm, I don't know if that's a good idea because how annoying is it if I found an internal link, I click on it and it goes to the homepage. I'm like, oh, I didn't click that. Press back. I click it again, want to find more information, still goes to the homepage. Really, really, really annoying. This is why, in my opinion, I would rather have a 410 because that actually shows to a user the page is gone. It's not confusing, it helps with that user experience to show that actually this content is missing now. Also, we know that um, if you do 410s properly, it doesn't affect your crawl budget, so I'd rather have them in and go through the internal links properly. It is a manual boring job, but again, do it in your batches and you'll be okay. Okay, so I think we've covered those 10 steps. We've done our brand and audience research to make sure our content that we're auditing is actually gonna make sense. We've got a statement to remind ourselves of what we want to achieve. We have categorized everything to make it easier for ourselves, pulled data from several sources. We've also gone beyond search just to make sure we're not just thinking about ourselves. And seven, we have highlighted trends using conditional formatting because visuals are much easier to work with. We've cut a lot, probably and we've been working in batches to make things easier. And finally, please check internal links. Just please, I beg you. So hopefully now that you've seen this talk, when your head of SEO asks you, I want you to do a content audit, you won't be thinking you want me to do what? And you won't actually feel like this. You won't think, ah, oh, this is fine. You'll actually think this is fine. Uh, thank you very much uh, for watching my content audit talk. Like I said, there's a free template coming. Um, hopefully that's what it'll work. If you do anything else today, please go and see Eva Cheng for link building advice later this afternoon, Jasmine Grant tomorrow afternoon. Thanks very much. Bye. <laughs>